Hey guys, so today is going to be a little bit more of a vulnerable video. We're going to take a journey with Tony. He is climbing this mountain, all right? And I made it kind of like a little masterpiece, y'all. I can't wait to tell you the story, but I want you to picture yourself as Tony, okay? You're climbing this mountain. You're following Jesus. You've strayed away from that group of friends that smokes weed and uh, does drugs and goes to the clubs and all that stuff, right? Maybe right now you're going through persecution. Maybe right now your friends, your family think you're too fanatic about Jesus. Maybe even Christians are saying, whoa, you take this whole Christianity thing way too seriously. You know, you believe in uh, the gifts of the spirit, you believe in uh, tongues and prophecy and uh, healing and deliverance. Uh, you know, that's just too much. And, um, you know, the, the gift stopped back in the Bible's days. Well, that never is said in the Bible. Number one, I'm going to just say that. Number two, if we deny the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we deny the Holy Spirit himself. Because if we deny a part of God's word, we deny god's word in its entirety you know jesus for example he said in the new testament these signs shall follow them that believe me them that means all of all of us all disciples right they shall speak in new tongues they shall cast out demons they shall heal the sick right and if you are that person if you are being persecuted for believing the Bible in its entirety for what it is, or you are just sold out for Jesus, you're in love with him, you are not alone. I'm standing with you. The body of Christ is standing with you. You may feel like you're going on this journey like Tony and you have nobody by your side. You feel like everybody thinks you're crazy and you feel like everybody is just criticizing you. But what I've been learning lately is that our brothers and sisters are suffering around the world the same sufferings we are suffering and we are doing this together we are a true family you know jesus there was a there was a moment right where he was preaching to a bunch of people and all of a sudden somebody came and said hey your mom and your brother are looking for you and jesus said who is my mother and my brother so he takes his focus off, he takes the focus off of Mary. And he says, who is my mother? Who is my brother? My mother and my brother are those who do the will of God. His real family are the people that are in the body of Christ, his brothers and sisters in the faith. Jesus understood this very well. Jesus' brothers would mock him for doing these signs and miracles. What his ministry basically consisted of was deliverance and healing. Uh, you know, I made a post uh, just recently about this and uh, one, of, one of you said that, um, that you prayed over your dog and your dog was healed and your family still didn't believe it. And unfortunately, it is not our job to convince our family. I mean, that's not unfortunately. It is not, it's fortunate, actually. But that we don't carry that burden. It is the Holy Spirit's job to convict our family. It is the Holy Spirit's job to teach. And sometimes we just want people to see this is part of Jesus. And we can't reject that part of Jesus. But we have to keep going, y'all. Okay, and maybe you got friends that are telling you, right? Tony's coming up this mountain. He's trying to get over here, which is God. Okay, think of Moses, y'all. Think of Moses. Moses left all these people and he went all the way up to the mountain to meet with God for 40 days and 40 nights. Okay, and he's, he's trying to get past this point, right? Into the dark clouds. The dark clouds are number one well we're gonna go into that hold on because i'm gonna get ahead of myself but he's trying to get up here above the dark clouds to be in the presence of the lord and while he's doing this hike 
okay? Now we're not going to talk about Mosley. We're going to talk about Tony. While he's doing this hike, while you're doing this hike, you may have people here saying, come back, come on. Come, come to the bar with us, man. What are you doing? Man... You got that, you got that uh, a wife at home, whatever, you're whipped. You're whipped, man. Oh, you're taking this Jesus thing way too seriously. Come on. Don't be a wuss or whatever. I don't even know what that word means. And if it's a bad word, I'm sorry. I don't know what it means. But don't be a, 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 a wimp. It says right here, uh, somebody else could be saying to you, there's nothing up there. What are you doing giving your life for Jesus? You're wasting your time. You're wasting your life. You could be, you know, partying and enjoying YOLO. You only live once. No, you don't. You live twice because here after this life, eternity comes and we spend it in one of two places, heaven or hell, depending on whether we accepted the gift of salvation of Jesus Christ on the cross, paying our penalty, the debt, that we incurred from all the bad things we've done he paid it and if we don't take that payment you know that gift of payment we will have to pay for it in hell right so somebody somebody else could be saying you know he's taking so long right maybe you're a pastor maybe you're a leader and you're so worried about you know these people that you're leading that you've literally lost touch with god moses wasn't worried about this even though when he went up there, what were they doing? Making a golden calf, the Israelites. Because they were saying he's taking too long. They were depending, some people depend too much on their pastors. They depend on their pastors and sermons and, and all that to hear the voice of God and learn. And that's good to be hungry for wisdom and have a teachable spirit. But you need to be hearing from the Lord himself. You need to be hearing from Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit speaks every time I read the Bible, he speaks. He gave me this whole thing today with my husband. You know, we cannot be idolizing anybody because even Moses wasn't even allowed in the promised land because he sinned. People are infallible. God is never infallible. He will never fail. Some people will say, you'll never make it. You'll never make it. You'll never make it through that addiction. You'll never get set free. Come on. You'll never get set free from cancer. You know, you got to take your medicine. Wait, you say, God, God, God. God can heal. I've seen it, guys. I've seen a boy with a broken hand healed in Jesus' name. I prayed for him and I felt the bones clicking in my hand. So when you're getting up here and the closer you get to Jesus the more the devil right here is telling all these people, influencing them to shout louder, shout louder. Those voices you're gonna start hearing are just, you know, distracting you from your purpose, from the deeper revelation. And they don't want to go where you're going. They're over here staying complacent. They wanna stay in the same thing. They wanna, they wanna stay without deeper revelation you know they they don't want to know the deeper truths of the bible because they're okay with what it is and there's always more to learn about god you can read the bible a million times and learn more and more and more even the same passage you can read it five times and learn more and there's people that don't want to go deeper with god there's people that want to go to church and then go to the club or go to the bar or you know, just live lukewarm and live, live like the world. When Jesus said, I took you out of the world, don't go, you know, to drinking parties anymore. Don't go, you know, that's in scripture. You have to be set apart. You know, you're totally different from everybody else now. And Tony, when, when, when he's so close to God, he doesn't even want those things. And these people right here are just trying to discourage you. Don't listen to the criticism the only opinion that matters here is God's opinion of you. 
Whether people think you're crazy, they're going to think you're crazy. Whether people mock you, they're going to mock you. Whether people are going to uh, question you and your sanity and whatever, and whether you're making this, this Jesus thing a whole big deal, that is between them and God. But you know whose opinion matters? It's God's. And when you're climbing this mountain, God is well pleased, but do expect resistance. Do expect that people right here are going to try to discourage you. And sometimes they're the people closest to you. A man's enemies are the members of his own household. Right? So when you get up here, okay, when you find this is the destination, this is where you want to be, okay? In the Holy of Holies. This is this is where you're like in love with Jesus and like his presence is just you don't want to leave like 10 minutes in, in the prayer closet and you're like man it's taking forever to pray I just want to get out of here it's so boring but when you get up here it feels like when you're when you're really like this with Jesus you're so close to him you're besties with him you don't want to leave the secret place Jesus said when you pray go into your closet shut the door behind you and pray to your father who sees you in secret and he who sees you in secret shall reward you openly, publicly. When you're in the secret place, when you're spending time with Jesus, okay, and you're up here, there's, there's these clouds, these black clouds, and it blocks people from seeing you, right? They don't know what's going on here. They don't know how close you are to God because that's between you and God. That's in your secret place. They don't know the deeper revelations that you're receiving from God. And when you climb back down that mountain to try to tell everybody what the Lord has shown you, just know that many of them are not going to understand. Many of them are not going to care. But you still have a responsibility to share the deeper revelations and the truths of the Bible because the whole Bible matters, including Jesus's ministry that he passed on to us, which was healing and deliverance because it is needed in the church there's so many people that go to church every single sunday and they try so hard and they read their bible and they pray and they worship but what happens they they're still stuck in pornography they're still stuck in adultery they're still stuck in uh suicidal thoughts and depression and what they need is deliverance because jesus there was a samaritan woman that came to jesus and said you know, I have, I have my daughter at home and she's, she's possessed by a demon. Help her. And this is a Samaritan, not a Jew, not a child, you know, of promise at the time. And he said, it's not for me to give the children's bread. And we're talking about deliverance, the children's bread to the dogs. Deliverance is the children's bread. It is for believers. Deliverance is for believers. A believer with the Holy Spirit cannot be possessed by a demon but they can be oppressed think about it oppression of a demon okay it's like having a voice right here the whole time and you're determined to stop drinking determined to stop porn and you've repented you don't want it but then you have this person right here talking 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 it's really hard to get over that addiction to get over all those things when you have somebody right here so you need to get that spirit away Right? And sometimes we open doors through pornography that allows these spirits to come and influence us all the time and oppress us. Right? So, it is the children's bread. An unbeliever does not want to get delivered, boo. They want to keep being in their sin. But a believer is repentful and says, I don't want to do this. I want to live for God and I want to love my neighbor as myself. And I know that sin is actually destroying myself and other people. It is selfishness at the core. That's what sin is. And so, you know, they want deliverance and deliverance is for the children of God. Okay. It is a beautiful thing. Now, I want a rabbit trail. You guys know me. So, and I believe in deliverance because it changed my life. It saved me from smoking, guys. I was addicted to smoking cigarettes for years and years and years. And I finally got deliverance and I am set free 100%. No temptation. My husband was set free from pornography since he was nine years old. He had a pornography addiction. Sometimes even five times a day he would watch pornography. And when he got deliverance, 
he felt a burning sensation in his hand for like 30 minutes. His left hand, he was a lefty. And uh, seven plus years, never again the temptation, never did it again, never looked at porn, never masturbated even, never again. And that is what the church needs, the children's bread. So I went on a rabbit trail, but that's important to know. Deliverance is for today, and the gifts of the, the Spirit have not stopped because nowhere in the Bible does it say that it stopped. Nowhere. And the, there's many scriptures in the New Testament that say that deliverance is, it, it, it indicates that it's always. There's demons back then in people. There's demons today in people. And Jesus still wants to deliver people from demons today. It's a beautiful thing. He is deliverer. And it's not a part, just because we don't understand it doesn't mean that we should reject that part of Jesus. Now, here, when you're up here, you might be thinking, man, I could have comfort. I could have, you know, these friends and family that I left behind because now I'm following Jesus. Jesus said, anyone who leaves father, mother, brother, sister, household for my sake shall get double in this life and in the next reward. It is worth it, even though it's a lonely road. You've got the whole body of Christ behind you. You've got me. You've got everybody that's suffering with you, the persecutions that Jesus suffered and it's promised we're gonna have that. But we're all in this together. And if you're going through this, I want you to know, I care. Whoever you are watching this, I pray for you before you watch it. I pray for you guys. And we're a team together. When one falls, we all fall together and we help each other. We carry each other's burdens because that is the fulfillment of the law. That's what the Bible says. The fulfillment of the law is to carry each other's burdens. And when you get up here and you have these, these dark clouds, you're in the presence of the Lord. You're getting deeper revelation. You're falling in love with him. You can't even see these people anymore. You can't even hear them anymore because you're so with Jesus. It's like all that doesn't matter. The more you focus on Jesus, the more you're in perfect peace. The Bible says, you keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. When your mind is stayed on Jesus, you're showing him, I trust you. I'm not looking at my circumstances. I'm not looking at the people saying this and this and this and trying to discourage me. Because the devil uses these people and I'm going to pray for them. And you know what? When Moses came down and he saw that all these people rejected him as leader and they went with Aaron. And they started making this golden calf and worshiping this other God. They rejected God and him. You know what God was going to do? He was going to destroy all the Israelites. Why? Because after splitting the Red Sea and doing all these miracles, they in unbelief went to another God because they were impatient. But Moses prayed for the ones that rejected him. Pray for the ones that are rejecting you. Pray for your family and friends that are saying that you're a fanatic for Jesus, that are persecuting you, that are saying you're crazy, that are making fun of you and saying, oh, you believe in prophecy, you believe in all this stuff. Pray for them because you know what? They are missing out on the gifts of the Spirit. They are missing out on Jesus. They are missing out on the deeper truths of the Bible. They are missing out. And not only that, you know, that's some serious stuff to deny the gifts of the spirit is to deny the spirit of God. And when we're like, you know, out and about and, you know, we we're talking with people. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my, the angels of my father in heaven. That's scary. But see, we don't, we think, oh, it's denying Jesus uh, before men means like I say, I don't believe in Jesus. But it's more than that. When we deny the word of God, because Jesus is the word of God made flesh. When we deny the word of God, we are denying him. When we say, yeah, I believe the Bible, but I don't believe in, you know, all these things that it says that, you know, believers can have in the New Testament or all these. You're denying the word of God and what it says. And it's a very serious thing. When you were saying, I believe in the word of God. But I don't believe in homosexuality or, or that homosexuality is a sin. I don't believe that abortion is a sin. I don't believe that these things are a sin. I just don't believe it. You can, you have free will to do that. But at the end of the day, you are denying the word of God. And that is a very serious matter. And I used to do that to some degree. 
I used to make excuses for my sin. But when we're before the Lord on that day, we're naked before him. There's no excuses. So forget about these voices. Listen to the voices of the body of Christ that is cheering you on to keep going. Listen to the voice of the Lord who is cheering you on to keep going. And let these voices go in the background. And when God exposes people, pray for them. When God exposes the people who are not for you, pray for them. But understand that he's exposing them and taking them away from your life, not to hurt you, but to protect you. To protect you because you don't need those negative voices in your head. You've got a mission. You've got their souls that are waiting for you to rise up and be the man or woman of God that you were called to be. You don't have time for the devil to be speaking in your ear through people. You don't have time for that. There are souls at stake and we need to forget about ourselves and we need to die to ourselves and, you know, love Jesus and loving Jesus is feeding his lambs, feeding his sheep, right? So I want to encourage you. If you're getting persecuted today, let me tell you something. You're doing something right. Because the Bible says, Woe to you when all men speak well of you. For so did they of the false prophets. Woe to you when all men speak well of you. When you are a Christian that literally nobody talks bad about. It's because you are not speaking truth boldly the way you should be. And people say, oh, you know, just preach the gospel. You know, just, you know, uh, I don't need to preach the gospel. I just live it. No, we all need to preach the gospel. Jesus said in the Great Commission, preach the gospels to every living creature, cast out demons out of people, heal the sick, raise the dead. And he said, even greater things you shall do when I leave. And what are we doing? No one's, the church doesn't believe in the gifts of the spirit. And Jesus would go into towns and they wouldn't believe in him. He wouldn't do any miracles. And they wonder, oh, well, I've never seen it before. Well, because you don't believe in it, you quench the spirit, right? And so, ultimately, okay, you're going to have this persecution. But if you are not getting persecuted at all, if you're not getting any resistance, if you're not getting any hate from the world, examine your life because you might just be to please man you might just be to get the applause of men to keep the peace jesus in many ways did not just keep the peace he spoke when needed to be spoken even though it was offensive he rebuked those who needed to be rebuked even though they got offended and it started a rally in love he did it in love so i want to encourage you today keep going You've got me, your sister in Christ. You've got all of us here who love you. You are loved. God loves you. And the angels of heaven are cheering you on. Forget about the voices and keep listening for God's voice alone.